A happy lover who has come to look on her that loves him well, who lights and rings the gateway bell, and learns her gone and far from home. He saddens. All the magic light dies off at once from bower and hall, and all the place is dark, and all the chambers emptied of delight. So find I every pleasant spot in which we two were wont to meet, the field, the chamber, and the street, for all is dark where thou art not. A widower reaches out in darkness to embrace his wife in bed beside him, but she is gone. A young man knocks on the door of his beloved, only to learn that she has moved far away. A speaker addresses sorrow as his wife. These are some of the devices Tennyson uses to communicate his grief at the loss of his friend, Arthur Henry Hallam, the subject of In Memoriam. The two had met as young men at university at Trinity College, Cambridge. They shared a love of classical civilization and poetry, which would shape Tennyson's career. Classics, especially the culture of ancient Greece, can help us to understand aspects of In Memoriam in its idealized vision of friendship in the sense that Hallam has attained perfection in death, is evidence of a heritage that Tennyson and Hallam shared. Hallam died suddenly of an aneurysm in 1833. The loss stayed with Tennyson, who composed In Memoriam over the next 17 years. It was published in 1850. Hallam was a brilliant young man, and for that reason, In Memoriam is haunted by a sense of unfulfilled promise. That such a life could be cut short prompted Tennyson to consider large and controversial questions like whether there could be any divine plan at all or the status of humanity in relation to a nature that seemed indifferent. Lost in grief, the poet wondered how to grieve and what else could be done. In Memoriam was published anonymously in 1850, but the reading public recognised that it was by the already famous Tennyson. It gained a new significance in 1862, following the death of Queen Victoria's husband, Prince Albert. Queen Victoria said that her only consolations were the Bible and Tennyson's In Memoriam. It became something of a national monument to sorrow. This shows us that although In Memoriam is profoundly personal, even uncomfortably so at times, it also addresses common experiences of grief. For that reason, Tennyson claimed the work was written not in his voice, but in the voice of the human race. The work appealed to readers because aspects of bereavement are universal, but also because Tennyson both represents and interrogates the values of the Victorian age. For that reason, in the pages of In Memoriam, we find engagement with themes that are prominent in Victorian literature. To give a few examples, these include literature itself, the act of writing, science, both for good and for ill, the natural world and nature as a force, economy, the businesses of profit and loss, Religion, exploration and journeys, ritual, romantic love, and public sentiment, or the voice of the public. 